A galaxy has been observed that does not appear to contain dark matter. It is believed that the matter and energy that we observe directly make up only a few percent of the total contents of the universe. The rest is called dark matter and dark energy. Its existence is revealed by indirect observations, such as the gravitational effects exerted by it. Now a team of astronomers has spotted a galaxy that appears to have no dark matter. The observation results do not match the leading cosmological model. According to the standard cosmological model, the universe is filled with much more dark matter than baryonic matter. The normal matter we know. This hypothetical substance is invisible, does not emit or reflect light, and is therefore very difficult to detect. But its existence is betrayed by its gravitational effects, at least that's how scientists explain anomalies in the rotation of galaxies and the movement of galaxies in clusters. There is too little visible matter to explain the effects in these cases. Despite years of research, the existence of dark matter has not been confirmed. Scientists are still trying to figure out what its exact nature is and what creates it. In the standard cosmological model, massive galaxies contain significant amounts of dark matter. Dark matter is thought to be the glue that holds stars, gas and dust together to form galaxies. The prevailing idea is that all galaxies can only exist if they are held together by dark matter. But a recent observation by a team of astronomers led by Sebastian Comoran of the University of La Laguna in Tenerife has spotted a galaxy that appears to be devoid of dark matter. This galaxy, 240 million light years away, is designated NGC 1277. It is several times more massive than the Milky Way. It should be emphasized here that this is one of the oldest galaxies, which has not undergone major changes and has not had major interactions with other galaxies in its history. These so-called relic galaxies are very rare and are thought to be the remnants of giant galaxies that formed in the early days of the universe. The importance of relic galaxies in understanding how the first galaxies formed was why we chose to observe NGC 1277, explains Comoran. The analyzers allowed the researchers to calculate the mass distribution of the galaxy within a radius of about 20,000 kilometers. Light years. Based on the standard cosmological model. We should expect from a galaxy of this mass that 10% of up to 70% of the total mass will be dark matter. Meanwhile, the data obtained rather lead to the conclusion that dark matter is only about 5%, or it may not be there at all. According to the astronomers, this seems especially odd due to the fact that we are dealing with such an old galaxy. In this situation, two possible explanations have been proposed, but neither is fully satisfactory. At least for the authors of the publication. First, we can assume that gravitational interactions with the environment within the galaxy cluster that contains NGC 1277 have stripped it of dark matter. Secondly, there may have been a situation where dark matter was pushed out of the galaxy as it formed from protogalactic fragments. In the context of this unusual galaxy and its incompatibility with existing models, one could risk saying that the solution would be to depart from the main models based on the assumption of the existence of dark matter. However, as the astronomers also point out, NGC 1277 would also pose a challenge to models that replace dark matter with modifications to how gravity works at all. And the law of universal gravitation must be universal and cannot contain exceptions. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Astronomy and Astrophysics. What killed the dinosaurs and where did it come from? A new concept brings the mystery closer. Earth's history changed forever after a giant cosmic collision about 66 million years ago. This event left its mark in the form of the almost 150 kilometers wide Chicxulub crater, located off the coast of Mexico. The devastating impact put an end to the reign of the dinosaurs, triggering a sudden and massive extinction. 
In total, almost three quarters of plant and animal species disappeared from the face of the Earth. For years, scientists have been trying to determine what really hit our globe and where it came from. Now, a pair of scientists from the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics have developed a concept that may bring the puzzle closer. Their research was published in the journal Nature's Scientific Reports using statistical analysis and gravitational simulations. Amir Siraj and Avi Loeb calculated that some Oort cloud comets could be pushed off course by Jupiter's gravitational field. The Oort cloud is composed mainly of dust, tiny rocks, asteroids, ice, and solidified gases that orbit the Sun and form the boundary of our solar system. The solar system is like a pinball machine, explains Siraj. The gravitational pull of Jupiter, the most massive planet in our system, kicks comets into orbits that bring them closer to the Sun, he says. As they pass near our star, comets can experience powerful forces that shatter chunks of rock, producing cosmic debris that threatens the Earth. The part of the comet closer to the Sun is attracted more strongly than the part further away. It creates a tidal force throughout the facility, says Siraj. In such a situation, a so-called tidal disturbance can occur, in which a large comet breaks up into many smaller pieces. The key is that on the return trip to the Oort cloud, there is an increased probability that one of these fragments will hit the Earth. New calculations based on the concept of Siraj and Loeb indicate that the chances of similar comets hitting the Earth are much greater than previously thought. A pair of scientists say their theory could explain the formation of the Chicxulub crater. Our work provides a basis for explaining this event, says Loeb. We believe that if an object approaching the Sun breaks up, it could start a chain of events that will result in an impact similar to the one from 66 million years ago. Researchers had previously thought that the object that created the Chicxulub crater came from the asteroid belt between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. However, evidence found on Earth indicated that the comet was composed mostly of carbonaceous chondrite. Meanwhile, similar objects are hard to find outside the Oort cloud. Adding further support to Siraj and Loeb's hypothesis, studies of other terrestrial craters have also shown that the composition of the objects that produced them was similar. This includes a comet that struck about 2 billion years ago and left behind the largest ever found on Earth Bradeford Crater in South Africa, the Zamenshing Crater in Kazakhstan which is the largest confirmed crater in the last million years, has similar properties. The scientists say the timing of these impacts is consistent with their calculations of the expected rate at which comets are precipitated from the Oort cloud by planetary interaction. Siraj and Loeb say their hypothesis can be tested by further studies of craters, including those found on the lunar surface. The new Vera Rubin Observatory in Chile which may be able to observe tidal disturbances of comets, is also expected to help. The facility is scheduled to start operations next year. We should observe smaller near-Earth objects from the Oort cloud more often, says Lowe. I hope we can test the theory with more data on similar comets. Loeb argues that understanding the mechanisms described is not only crucial to solving the mystery of Earth's history, but may prove very important in the future, should a similar event ever threaten our planet. It would probably be an amazing sight, but we certainly wouldn't want to see it, 